large. And I want to thank everybody for being here this evening. As you know, the Social Services Veterans Culture and Recreation Committee have put on <coughs> two open public hearings. This is our second one. I'm City Councilor Marion Large and Chair of the Committee, and to my right is Gina Louise Shira from Councilor from Ward 4. And to my left, I have the City Councilor from Ward 7, Lisa Kwan. And we're doing this because this resolution was put in place about a year ago with a situation that happened in the city of Northampton when the benches were removed. So there are some counselors who are also sponsors of that of this resolution of by the sidewalk. So this is our second hearing and we want to hear from the public and we've done it already in Northampton and we had people from Northampton that attended also from Florence. And this helps us to look at this ordinance very, very carefully if we need to look at deleting or adding any other language to it. So as you know, we want to know from you exactly what you like and what you don't like about our downtown areas, which includes Northampton and Florence. And how can we make both of these downtowns areas of lighting comfortable and safer all of Northampton residents and Florence residents? So I am going to, we do have some counselors here this evening, and I would like to introduce Councilor Maureen Carney from Ward 1, and also Ryan O'Donnell, Councilor from Ward 3, our Council Clerk, Pam Powers. And also, I want to announce that this meeting is being videoed by Adam Cohen's on the North Street Association. And I want to introduce our council vice president, Jesse Adams, who will be taking over on this meeting for us. Thank you, council. Okay. I'm going I'm to I'm I'm read the resolution to you, and then I'm just going to give you um, a brief background, although I think you heard it pretty well from, from Council at Large. Um, <clears throat> in City Council, June 6, 2013, upon the recommendation of City Councilor Maureen T. Carney, Councilor William H. Dwight, Councilor Jesse M. Adams, and Councilor Marianne L. Barge, resolution to support vibrant sidewalks. Whereas urban planning professors Anastasia Lukitu Sedaris and Renia Aaron Fook identified five essential purposes of sidewalks in their compelling article, Vibrant Sidewalks in the United States, and whereas these essential purposes can be described as follows. Movement. Sidewalks are how pedestrians move from one place to another. Encounter. Sidewalks are the place where you meet people, people you know, people you don't know, and people you might not want to know. And sometimes this purpose of the sidewalk trumps the movement purpose as in when a street fair uh, temporarily closes a pathway to normal activities. Sidewalks are where spontaneous and planned festivities break the rhythm of everyday life and give collective expression to people's joy, sorrow, or aspirations. Confrontation. Not every activity that takes place in a sidewalk is comfortable. Rallies and protests, sit-ins, or even talking loudly might be disruptive or violate social norms. Still, these activities should be accommodated on democratic sidewalks. Survival. For some people, the sidewalk is home and the only place where they can carry out the ordinary activities of daily life. Sidewalks are also, controversially, the places where some people like panhandlers, street vendors, or day laborers go to earn a living. Beauty. Sidewalks can be a place of lush blue beauty with trees, plants, street furniture, art, and other items that give the sidewalk and the community it serves its own identity. And Whereas in 2011, Nelson Nygaard Design Charette focused on downtown Northampton, called for sidewalks markedly widened and Main Street narrowed to shorten crosswalks, increased safety, increased public space for foot traffic and in front of local businesses, and provide an opportunity for more benches. And whereas in 2005, a study entitled Northampton Streetscape Improvement Plan, Main Street and Pleasant Street, was prepared by Denning Design Associates, Inc and called for in addition to improving and widening sidewalks 
increasing seating along Main Street and Pleasant Street. Whereas people are more likely to walk in areas that host a diversity of uses, and whereas street furniture allows for a city to be more of a community, an area to gather, share, and experience life together, and whereas benches provide pedestrians with an opportunity to sit and rest, wait for a bus where there isn't adequate bus shelter space, meet a friend, or read the paper. Now therefore be it resolved that the Northampton City Council envision sidewalks and spaces that can accommodate a variety of activities and calls for both the return of removed Main Street benches and for expanded street furniture along the entire length of Main Street. So what I'd like to add is that this was actually drafted by Councillor Carney, and you heard the councillors that were uh, the other sponsors along with Councillor Carney. And as, as the resolution states, and, and as it cites in the footnote under uh, footnote one, this was taken largely from a scholarly, scholarly <coughs> articles uh, in, in the drafting, and also from our own studies um, from the Nelson Nygaard de Design Charette and, and our own improvement plan for the city. So these are ideas that, um, that come from, from other sources, but also um, within the city as well. I'd like to point out that there have been two, you'll see two uh, amendments that, that, that were made from the, the earlier this year from the Economic Community Development Housing and Land Use Committee. And that was where um, the language under survival, where it states eating, sleeping, that the rest of us more commonly do indoors, that was stricken. And the other amendment was, uh, you'll notice in the final paragraph, it states both enjoyable and disruptive activities that, the, that language was stricken in favor of a variety of activities. And the reason why is because uh, we heard some concerns from people that, they were, that, that, that it, it, there was a perception that it looked like we were encouraging certain types of activities when we were uh, really pointing out that it's important that all types of activities be uh, accommodated in, in our public, in, in the public. So we made those two changes based on that. And this is going to come back before the council for further consideration. So it's important that all of you weigh in, not just on benches, but on all of public property, downtown Florence, the citywide. And the purpose of this forum is to hear from all of you about what you would like to see for your public space. Thank you. Do you want to add anything, Maureen? Oh, no, no, no. So we're going to be open this up to the public and just have to raise your hand so we can ask people to come forward to speak. Would anybody love to speak? Ruth McGrath. Hi, I'm Ruth McGrath. I live on Longview Drive in Florence. And I just like to state that benches for me are a necessity. I have a brace on my leg. I walk with a cane or a walker. To go from one end of Florence to the other or any of the stores in between is impossible for me. The only benches are in the park at one end, the park at the other end, and then there's a low stone wall outside Florence Savings Bank that I can sit on, but I need help getting up from that. So benches for me would mean that I can bring business to Florence because I can shop here again. Same thing with Northampton. If we had more benches, I could get around a lot better. Um, there's not a huge amount of handicap parking and in Florence there's very little handicap parking so I can't even move my car along to get to different stores. So I am wholeheartedly in support of more benches and one other thing I like to say my husband and I utilize all the parks in Northampton, Florence, Childs Park, uh, Pulaski. We like to take a blanket and sit out and have a picnic and just kind of zone out for the day. So I, I really enjoy the parks as well. Thank you. Hi, I'm Scott Thomas, I'm the ADA. Do you want me to stand here or do yeah. I do something different? If you can just speak out loud. Okay. I'm Scott Thomas, the ADA Ooh. coordinator for the city of Northampton, as well as the director for the council on aging. And I've lived in Florence for 38 years and love Florence. Um, a while ago, brought to the Commission on Disability was the idea of needing benches in Florence. So I am going to focus on benches. Though sidewalks should be uh, clean of litter, sidewalks should um, have beautiful planting, no cracks in the sidewalks, so uh, 
walkers or wheelchairs or high heels or anything like that doesn't get caught in sidewalks. That it should be accessible for everyone without worrying about uh, getting caught in some disrepair on the sidewalk. But in terms of the benches, um, I know in the resolution it talks a lot about people being able to socialize, people um, using them as a, a place to read books, to have a meal. But I'm going to address benches as a way for people to be able to get from point A to point B with having some rest period in between. Um, and I'm going to use this as an example of Toby Manor right down here on Maple Street. Somebody coming from Toby Manor has nowhere to sit this whole length. If they want to come into Florence, they don't have a place to sit um, in between them trying to get to a business. And uh, the other thing is that just seniors or disabled um, individuals in a wheelchair using a walker, there are uh, kids who have asthma who can't walk long distances without needing to sit down and sort of catch their breath. Um, and I'm just using that as one example. People with heart condition of uh, any age. Um, so benches can serve a total population of many, many age groups. And so I would recommend and encourage benches um, in many locations throughout Florence. And I already spoke to this at your first public hearing about Northampton, so you know my story about Northampton as well. Thank you. Thank, Thank you very much. Yeah, I want to concur with what's been said about the importance of benches for rest. Uh, it's essential, you know, when we design wheelchair ramps now, you, you do a certain amount of run, then you have to have a level, and then more run. That's the principle of rest. Uh, benches serve that purpose. Uh, on benches, it's very important that benches have armrests uh, because a bench that somebody has difficulty sitting or rising is difficult um, to use. A couple other things, though, concern, I think, Northampton. One is the response to when tripping hazards appear, uh, basically in sidewalk surfaces, occasionally a brick gets loose or something other form of tripping hazard that can be the result of, of weather or deterioration, those need to be responded to quickly. And I think in the long run, the plan, particularly for the downtown environment, it's very important to deal with some of the slopes on the east side of Main Street. We have some very, very steep slopes. Those exceed code. But an immediate issue of benches, benches are essential and not at some distance that somebody has to exhaust themselves to go to. Thank you, Chris. Just want to reiterate something that Councilor Lombardo said. Um, although there is
And I'm not attributing it to any one cause. I think that it's the internet. I think that it's uh, the internet is, is huge. It's the way that most people are doing business nowadays is that they find it more convenient to shop over the internet. Uh, there's environmental issues there. There's a whole host of things to shop over. Uh, but the, I think that in this resolution, it's you know it, it does to me encourage behavior, which I feel like doesn't need to be encouraged. Uh, clearly, uh, there's I think there's a difference between panhandlers and homelessness. Uh, the Department of Justice, to, if you don't mind me quoting. Uh, the Department of Justice says that many studies have found that only a small percentage of homeless people actually panhandle, and a small percentage of panhandlers are homeless. There was a, a, a book written by a Northampton pan, panhandler, uh, Northampton politics, and the economics of panhandling. And in that book, he states how he sees panhandling as a sort of business or a line of work, as he says. He also describes about how you need to pick your location, disguise yourself to look needier than you are, and how to advertise and perfect your pitch. So, you know, I think a lot of people who come to Northampton to Panhandle are doing so for because they see it as a job. Businesses in Northampton certainly recognize that there's needs, uh, legitimate needs, of people who uh, are, are disadvantaged. I think that the times that are tough right now are not just affecting businesses, but they're affecting everyone. Every household is, is struggling. And the way that the downtown businesses are reacting to that is that we're trying to coordinate our efforts to have more promotions that will benefit uh, different things. In the next three months, we're, we're putting out promotions where we're giving a, a portion of our profits to the uh, United Way to uh, the, the Hot Chocolate Run, which uh, supports people who are battered women, and uh, to the to homeless shelters. So, you know, we recognize that there's legitimate needs. We also feel as businesses that there's things that the, you know, we hope that everyone gives more of themselves and, and takes money in their pockets and and supports the homeless. Uh, I believe Northampton needs to do everything they can to find sustainable ways of increasing giving to, to those people. But I don't believe that we should be encouraging people to, to be on the sidewalks. Uh, it's their legitimate right. Uh, poverty is not a crime. It's a constitutional right. I have no problem with, with people doing it, it's their right, but we don't need to be encouraging it. You know, that same panhandler talks about how there's no panhandlers in Springfield because the Springfield police don't allow it. And conversely says, Northampton's great to panhandle and cops don't bother you and a variety of other things that, that point to that. Just to, uh, you know, not to, <coughs> I feel like that a lot of I've heard a lot of people describe walking Main Street like walking the gauntlet. Because you, you, uh, and I walk the streets of Northampton every day, and I never feel any issue of safety or anything else because I work downtown. I know these people totally comfortable walking. I'm also six foot two. Uh, when I once took a, a workshop on sexual harassment, there, there was an exercise where they had uh, we were asked a variety of questions, and we were told if you feel this way, if you feel like mildly bothered, to go into that corner. If you're not bothered, stand in that corner. If you're really bothered, go in that corner. Not and then they asked a variety of, of, described a variety of situations. And it amazed me to see the way that different people react to different questions, stimuli, situations. So whereas I can walk down the streets and not feel any sense of harassment at all, if you're uh, a woman, if you're someone with a small child, if you're elderly, if you're uh, a victim of abuse, any number of situations, you will feel those 
you know, walking that gauntlet, like, you may feel very differently. So I'm in favor of the resolution, but I would strike, you know, any any portion of the resolution that speaks to encouraging people to to come downtown and, and handle and handle. Uh, I'm here from the Foreign Civic and Business Association first about the benches. Um, we were disturbed to find out that, uh, that there was a movement to put benches in downtown Florence without involving the business community in downtown Florence. Um, many of the business owners feel that there are adequate benches at this point in time in Florence for traffic that we have. Uh, the bench, the bench is located at the park at this end of Main Street, at the other Main Street, at um, Northampton Park with Bank. There's one of the bus stops in the center, in the middle of town. Um, there are two new ones proposed for the mobile build, the mobile uh, complex, which is across from Birds. They might not be in your plan of purview. Um, and we are very concerned about what has the, uh, Transpired in downtown Northampton with the benches, and then we are, you know, kind of taking a careful eye on how that might develop in uh, downtown Florence. Uh, that's all I have to say for uh, the Florence Business Civic Association, which apparently uh, you did get a letter from us about this, I believe. Um, we made our concerns to the mayor. Um, but as a citizen of downtown Florence, I, I don't see how this speaks directly to public spaces and to downtown funds. The preference is mostly the sidewalks in North Hampton. So maybe we can get it to, to read as such. Uh, some of the activities it talks about will be more likely to happen in our park areas and not, in our, not on our sidewalks. Um, and I don't know if that's what it's speaking to or not because it's not clear in this resolution. Um, it says, I heard earlier from Jesse that it includes public spaces, but this doesn't really read, read this way. To, to me, it speaks from the sidewalk. And as far as urban development, there have been no studies or none cited in this about downtown Florence. So I think it's hard to say that whatever translates to downtown Northampton is going to translate to the village community of Florence, that our, our outlay is different, our parking is different, the way our street is approached is different, it's more of a drive-in community, a uh, service-oriented community, where people are more likely to drive to the location that they do business, not so much the park and shop along. Um, I do know that there aren't handicapped spaces in Florence. I know there were some slated that didn't get put into place. But at the same time, there's not going to be one in front of every business in downtown Florence, regardless. Um, can park in any parking space with a handicap placard. A lot of people don't know that. Um, and in Lawrence, there's lots of open parking spaces. So in some ways, it's great that there's plenty of parking in downtown Florence. And I know there, park, there was a handicap spot by Fun Savings Bank, and there's some other slated for Nashville that were appropriated a long time ago but never painted in. So that's great and that's wonderful, but there's still not going to be one all up and down. Am I correct? Oh. Um, and sadly, we just repaved uh, downtown Florence, so I don't think our sidewalks are getting any wider or our streets are getting any narrower. They just kind of stuck with us for about 20 years. Um, we are disappointed that 30 years ago, or 1988, when our sidewalks were redone, we didn't get improved sidewalks. We didn't get the brick overlay. We didn't get the Victorian plant posts. We're still stuck with our least uh, spun aluminum bolt and all the dents in them that we really like to have in place more than uh, bar park benches at this point. This is what this really sets as a tone, I believe, when I read this, for an attitude, for a way to live, a way to enjoy your community. Not so much about furniture. I mean, furniture doesn't make your community. It's how you live in your community, how, you, how, you, how your community works for you. So I think there's some give and take here. And I really, I, I'm a little bit put off about the whole, I don't know, to tolerance that we're supposed to, that is put into this, that, that morality that we should have already inside of us. 
So the fact that this gets preached to us from our government in some ways I find a little, I, I, don't, I don't know, is this an ordinance or is this, uh, I heard you say ordinance, but I heard resolution. So it's basically some sort of non-binding code of well-being, am I correct? I don't know how to interpret it. Um, so, oh, I would say that to the sidewalks, I was getting a little better. I was surprised that um, we had some handicapped approaches put fixed, like the one up here, the one in front of Florence, uh, Sitco now, uh, 10 Main Street was a medical office that it was not thought of for the whole project. Like they, they sloped ramps to meet the street level better, but on the sidewalk side, they made a lot of hazardous grades. In front of um, Florence Sicko, there's a foot drop from the pavement to the sidewalk, the same as in front of 10 Main Street. And right here at Emerald Florence Sick Center, the sidewalk ends abruptly and there's a big, there's a big berm that goes so it's kind of like a dead end sidewalk unless you're going to cross, unless you're going to cross the streets. It's really not handicapped friendly or, or user friendly. So those, those are the points. Thank you. Yeah. Patty, can you speak Well, I can yeah, just address the um, part about the handicapped parking that in Florence, um, there only was a handicapped parking spot next to Mark say okay. So again, the Commission on Disability gets concerns and complaints and um, kudos um, for different things happening in our community in regards to handicap parking or issues, including the benches, for example. So there, for handicap parking, there was one slated floor in front of Burr's and then one in front of the um, Ms. Mark Steiner. So it wasn't to have a handicap spot. No, I, 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 but I, I think you were saying that you thought there was going to be something. Well, no, I'm not saying that. I'm saying that there's no way it could ever happen. Right. So right. The, the, the truth of the matter is, it is what it is. Right. The, 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 I mean, it's a, it's a great effort, but I don't think it's going to change it. Because there's lots of open parking in Florence. Right. But it is nice for a, a, a person with disabilities to be able to get to a store and not park. Um, you know, have to block up. And, and again, I, I'm not trying to monopolize this for those persons who have disabilities, but you know, they are part of our community, those people with multitudes of handicaps. And it's not just somebody in a wheelchair or walker, it's people with hearing impairments, sight impairments, um, and a, a number of other type, types of disabilities. So sometimes it's just trying to let people know that it's all of that. No, but I, also, I know that too, and I was limited mobility as well to say. But I also know that there's, as a fact of the topography of Florence and how it's different, that we have many privately owned lots mm -hmm. that also have handicap parking. Uh, medical, or savings bank, uh, Cooper's Corner, uh, um, Cumberland Farms, mm -hmm. the Northampton Bank. That so is absolutely all true. And so if you're doing business with those businesses, it's right because you can pull in and just park there. But if somebody's down on Maple Street, go down to Tobin Manor, and that's where you get to park. And so then somebody has to come at this. So all we do, um, or should be doing our mission with Commission of Disabilities, is to apply what should be for everyone, um, to make everything accessible as much as possible for pretty much, as I'll say, fair and equal, and base that on the ADA um, regulations. Well, I just want to say that. Um, when we first uh, drafted this resolution, it was in response to the public outcry around removal of benches, you know, last year in in downtown Northampton. And so the reference to the studies, it's true, it is two studies that were uh, done pertaining to downtown. But those studies also had some general suggestions about benches in general, um, and those are the ones that refer to people are more likely to walk in areas where there is a diversity of uses and where there is street furniture, they're more likely to walk and to use the area. And so, I mean, if there's something can be extrapolated from that to apply to Florence, it would be those sections of the resolution. But nothing in here was specific, it's true. Nothing was specific to downtown Florence. 
because those that uh, the Nelson Nygaard design charrette focused on the downtown Main Street and Pleasant Street area, and the other uh, Denig design was really about, um, again, about um, Main Street design. We just referred to those in the, in the resolution because they were things that had been solicited by the city, and it seemed time to probably revisit them and, and make a reference to them. here in the first sentence 
it doesn't make much sense to me. You say, or it says, I'm sorry, that for some people, sidewalk is home. That's true, or a part of home. And then you say it's the only place where they can carry out activity, ordinary activities of daily living, which I'm not sure what it means. And I'm not sure it's clear what it means. And then you take out eating and sleeping and other activities that more commonly occur in your when some people have a home or an indoors to go to. But as it stands, I don't think it says much. I think it's a nice uh, linguistic compromise, but I don't think it says much. So I leave that again. It's a resolution, not an ordinance, but I'm not sure where it takes us. I had some concerns this. You say that often controversially, places where people like panhandlers go to earn a living, and it's not controversial in a legal sense. Under Article 16 of the Massachusetts Declaration of Rights, panhandling is a First Amendment, or Article 16, freedom of expression, protected activity, and if a person can stand out there with a can and ask for donations to the Boy Scouts or to the Christmas Fund, he or she can ask for a contribution to herself. And everyone is free to walk away and say no, or do what you want, no one can commit a crime, or commit an assault, or a battery, or harassment, or many things. But I have the right to ask you for a dollar, or a quarter, or a penny, and you have the right to say no, or walk away, or do what you want. So I'm concerned about characterizing panhandlers need as being controversial. Um, Street vendors get sued into a whole other series of ordinances in the city. I wouldn't even begin to attempt to go there tonight. But I did have some concerns about putting day laborers in this category. I'm not sure why day laborers is there. I'm not sure that's what day that's what day laborers do. Day laborers work you know, back downtown. And I, I don't think these three in sequence make sense: panhandlers, street vendors, or day laborers. So uh, that those comments. I appreciate the work of the council in trying to be forthright about how we want the city's sidewalks to be vibrant and alive and welcoming. And so I thank you for the work. Thank you very much. Anybody else like to speak? Um, I'd like to say something about a few things that I've heard tonight. I think people are in a little bit of a misconception. I use a handicap spot because I can't park in a regular spot. The handicap spots are wider. If I can't open my door, I can't get in and out of the car. I have to open it fully all the way. So if I park in a regular spot, I can't get in and out of the car. That's why I look for handicap. Downtown in Florence, you're very lucky if you can get a handicap spot. Um, down there, all the construction, sorry, um, they're mostly full. The one by Florence Bank is how many cars in it than it's usually taken. Um, we usually have to park down the street on the side and then my husband gets me up the hill so we can get into the bank. Um, so that's the thing about handicap parking. The spaces are wider for a reason. Uh, wheelchairs, they have to have almost double width so that they can get the ramp out to get the wheelchairs out. Um, and the other thing is panhandlers, and this is just an observation that my husband and I have made. There's a panhandler usually outside of Stop and Shop. He doesn't have a bench, but he's always there. Uh, same thing down on King Street as you go at the big stoplight where Damon Road is. There's usually panhandlers down there. There's no benches there and no possibility of benches. So I don't see that benches are going to be a big addition to panhandling. Um, and one other thing that I just I forgot about that we enjoy, and there's I don't think there's any in Florence if there is. I haven't seen it. Downtown in Hamp, there's one of those little food vendors and little trucks outside of Smith College. They're fun, and I'd like to see more of those. We have one of Florence. Oh, you do? Good. Cool. I'll talk to you after. <laughs> 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 Would anybody else like to yell? Hi. Um, I'm Rutherford Platt, and I visit a lot of cities and write about cities, and I have a number of things to present as to other people in the room. And I, first of all, I just absolutely treasure our both parts and downtown where I have an office on Pleasant, off of Pleasant Street. Compared with so many cities, large and small, we have a really vibrant downtown and we want to help those businesses do as well as they can. Um, it strikes me that one of the things that causes problems amongst people, fellow users of sidewalks 
uh, is being too packed together. Well, crowding is good when you uh, are having a shopping binge and so forth. But Pleasant Street, the sidewalks are really too narrow. Uh, and there's all sorts of things cluttering up the available width of the sidewalk, uh, overhead signs and lights and parking meters and everything else. If there's some way to reduce the amount, I know there would be an auto cry, but the amount of on-street parking, at least on one side of Pleasant Street, and widen the sidewalks a bit, I think you'd have more flow to and from stores and people feeling a little more comfortable being around each other. Main Street, the sidewalks, to me, seem wonderful uh, in general. Good with the problem with Main Street is getting from one side to the other unless you're at the main intersection of Main and King. That works fine. Uh, but from there on all the way up to uh, City Hall, it, you're really taking your life in your hands some of the time, especially when it's dark, rainy, heavy traffic. And you all know what I'm talking about. I would really love to see a wider median strip for pedestrians to be able to get it part way across, stop, let the rest of the traffic move. However it's done, and decorate it, make it a, a real amenity. Um, and lastly, Belfast, Maine, smaller than Northampton, but also a very vibrant downtown. They have currently a bench, comp artistic bench competition. I was going to say the exact same thing. Oh, were you? It's so much fun. You can sit on them, you can look at them, you can take pictures of each other. It's just wonderful. And of course, eventually they'll be sold off, I guess, and replaced by something else. Yeah, I was going to say the exact same thing. Belfast thing. So maybe there'd be a way that we could bring some art street down to I think it's become an attraction. You can't even have the big fat bears. We could have some benches and make it an artistic endeavor. And there was one that was a high school shoot. So. Thank you. <laughs> Would anybody else like to speak? I'm, I'm Devin Bruce. Um, I hope it is a broader conversation than, than just benches. I really want the sidewalks improved. I want it to be a walkable town. And one idea for that is the DPW started its pothole reporting process in the winter, and I'd like to suggest that we might expand that to be a sidewalk reporting process for the cracks and the missing bricks and that sort of thing, because it just, it really bothers me to see people out in the street at night, and I'd like to, I'd like to really make our sidewalks so inviting that you don't do that. Thank you. Anybody else?